Suit your time. What's up, Zach here with Dr. IbalMD. Welcome back to the channel. I'm a third year ophthalmology resident. On this channel, we focus from everything about medical school residency, ophthalmology, fellowships, all that cool stuff about medicine. So go ahead, subscribe to the channel down below. In today's video, what I wanna go over is some suturing techniques. This is geared more toward ophthalmology, so if you're in ophthalmology, we're gonna go over some basics of suturing that I think will help you if you're getting started on either like a plastics rotation or maybe you're doing a pediatrics rotation you're gonna be doing strabismus surgery, this will apply either way. Or if you're gonna be closing up lid lacs or something like that, there's some basics for holding the instruments, loading the needles, just some basic things that may help you kind of get started. Let's get into it. All right, my friends, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go over a couple things. So first, I think if you have some loops, I would put them on for when you practice because you're gonna be using loops most of the time when you're doing the suturing if you have them. Uh, so if you have loops, go ahead, wear the loops. I'll go ahead and put them on. Okay, uh, next thing we're gonna need, I've got some Castro Viejo needle drivers. Most of our suturing in ophthalmology, especially when we're working on the skin, doing oculoplastic stuff, it's gonna be with these style of Castro Viejo needle drivers. So. These are a locking needle driver, so they have this mechanism here in the middle that allows me to click, and then it holds the needle in place. It stays locked, and then a second click will release it and open it. It's just a little mechanism right here that'll do that. Okay, and these particular ones here have a nice curve to them, so you can see that they have that curve to the end. Not of all of them do, some of them are straight. And then we have some pickups here as well um, to grab the tissue with when we're suturing. So basic things here, uh, when, you're, when you're doing these operations, especially if you're in the OR, go ahead and put your feet flat on the floor. Uh, just kind of anchor yourself in that way. Sit up straight. You don't want to be hunched over or bending over trying to get a good look at the patient and like having your neck bent or your back bent. You want to be sitting up straight. Let the magnification of your loops kind of get you zoomed in. Uh, so next thing is going to be the way we hold uh, these instruments. So this is wrong. You're not going to hold like this. You're not going to hold like this. You're going to hold these like a pencil, the same way you would hold a pencil. So you can either hold it like like this with one finger. The way I like to do it is with two fingers because that's how I hold a pencil. That may be a little different for most people, but I prefer to have uh, two fingers here when I'm, when I'm suturing. Uh, so you're going to hold it like a pencil. And this is not a fixed thing. It's not only like this in your hand. You can rotate it. You can do whatever you need to do. It doesn't have to stay stuck. I think that's a mistake that uh, you can make as a med student sometimes when you're trying to suture is, is not being willing to kind of move the instruments around and really get the torque on them that you need, really get the uh, rotation that you need when you're suturing. So don't be afraid to move them. Um, and I think having a set at home and just kind of keep them in your hands, you know. So when you're just sitting around watching TV, not doing anything, hold the instruments uh, and you'll just you'll become more familiar with them and they'll just become kind of a second nature uh, extension of yourself. Uh, so the more you can do that, the better you're going to be. Kind of like uh, Pistol Pete Rose, the way he would always carry a basketball everywhere he went. You surgeons are going to carry your stuff everywhere you go. Not really, but anyways, try to try to get familiar with them is what I'm saying. So those are going to be our basic instruments for suturing. Uh, you'll need some suture, so see if you can borrow some from somewhere. I got some Vicryl here, 6.0 Vicryl uh, on an S14. Uh, it'll just be a little easier to see the, the uh, suture here. And then if you get a fruit of some sort, you can use like um, an orange or I have a banana here. This one's kind of gotten old. But something to, to practice the suturing on. You can get some chicken or something. Uh, you know, if, you're, if we're talking about doing eyelid skin, uh, you know, an orange is going to be a little bit too thick. That may be a little more close to like brow skin. So if you can get something a little bit thinner, uh, it'll be a little more uh, approximated. But the main thing here is we're just practicing kind of using the instruments, how to hold them, and, you know, load a needle, uh, and just kind of the basics. So. The, uh, the actual thing we're suturing is not so key. So we'll go ahead and open up our suture. And one of, what we're gonna talk about here is, you know, how to load the needle. I think this is important to know how to actually do it. So this one is a, a double armed, double arm. So it has a needle on both ends. So let's say that you don't actually have it loaded just yet. I think the easiest thing to do 
is to go ahead and grab the suture. So you can palm these. You don't have to set these down to do something with your hand. You can palm these like this, and then you can still use all your fingers to do whatever you need to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the suture right here, and I'm gonna take my non-dominant hand and just slide it through my fingers like this until the end of the needle comes right to the tip there. And now I leave just a little bit of, of a suture um, outside of my fingers there, and then I have the needle. And then I can rotate it like this so that I can load it however I need, and I have complete control of it. Don't be grabbing the needle itself. You don't wanna, you don't wanna poke yourself with the needle. So just kinda grab the suture with your dominant hand, then your non-dominant hand, slide it up to the end, leave a little bit there, and now we're ready to load the needle. We have good control of it, uh, and so we can load it. So the key here, it depends on what, what direction we want to throw the needle. So if we want to do a forehand pass, meaning we want to throw it this way, a forehand pass, then we need to load the needle a certain way, as opposed to if we want to throw the needle backhand, uh, we'll load it a different way. So the easiest way to do that is to, you can just remember the, the little acronym uh, FDBU, uh, Funny Ducks by Underwear, I don't know, or insert whatever words make more sense, I, that's all I can think of. Uh, so FDBU, so forehand down, backhand up. So what I, what I mean by that is when you're holding the needle, if I'm gonna do a forehand pass, I'm going to point the needle down, so forehand down, and if I'm gonna do a backhand pass, backhand up. So I turn the needle up. So backhand is up, forehand down. So needle facing down for forehand, facing up for backhand. And the key here with loading it is the curve of our needle drivers is always gonna to face toward us. We're never going to load a needle this way, regardless of if it's up or down. We're not gonna load it like this, the needle drivers are always going to be away from the tip of the needle. So the curve, see how the curve is coming toward me away from the tip? We're never going to have the, t the curve going in the same direction as the tip. That's not the right way to load it. So we're always going to hold this like this, and then depending on if I'm going to do a forehand or a backhand, I'm either going to rotate the needle up or down. So let's say I want to do a forehand pass, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate the needle down, funny ducks, forehand down, so the needle's pointing down, I come in, I'm just getting, you know, the tip of my needle drivers on it, and, you know, I'm not loading it all the way back. You can load it somewhere between about the middle to about three quarters of the way back. I normally grab it about three quarters of the way back, and then think about the angle of the needle itself as well. So when you grab it, uh, you can go ahead and lock it in place, and then you obviously, when I talk about the angle, you're not going to want it, you know, turned in this way because it's gonna make it hard to do your pass. So you want it kind of at a right angle or depending on the direction of where it's gonna go through the tissue, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll go ahead and actually tilt it uh, a little bit like an uh, obtuse angle, so a little like in the opposite direction. And so now it's ready for a forehand pass. So the needle is going away from the curve, so the needle is this way and the curve of the needle drivers goes this way, if you can see that. Uh, and so we're, now we're ready. And you don't wanna be afraid to rotate the needle drivers when you're actually working with them. Okay, so same thing for if we're gonna do a backhand pass. So say we're, we need to actually pass the suture in this direction, so backhand, the back side of our hand, we're passing this way. So I know that's the next pass that I'm gonna have to do. So I grab the suture with my dominant hand then grab it with my non-dominant hand, slide all the way up so that I have good control of the needle. I can twist it by spinning the suture and then I can grab it where I need to. So funny ducks by underwear, backhand up, by underwear, backhand up. So the needle faces up, facing up toward the camera right now. And then I come in and go ahead and just grab it, lock it in place, and I'm ready to pass it in the backhand direction. And again, the curve of the needle drive is always facing away from the tip of the needle. So when, whenever I load it, 
my curve is always facing to me and the needle is always going to be facing away and just depending on if I'm going to do front hand or back hand I will load the needle either facing down or facing up and then you're ready to to pass in any direction all right so we have it loaded now for backhand pass so we'll leave it like that and let's go ahead and make a little incision on our banana here I'll do some surgery on the banana okay and so next thing remember we're holding this like a pencil and then we're gonna hold our pickups here like a pencil as well and you know if these will either have uh, teeth or they won't have teeth uh, it's it's easier on the tissue it might be counterintuitive to think about it like this but it's easier on the tissue if the forceps actually have teeth because it requires less crushing force to actually keep the tissue between the forceps so if it has teeth you get better gripping power you don't have to use as much force uh, so preferably you want to use ones with teeth uh, if you can and so what you're going to do here when you're getting ready to pass this is a little difficult to see because my banana is brown but you want to grab the side that you're going to pass through first and you want to lift it up you want to lift the skin edge up so you're just going through skin if that's what we're suturing in this case we're assuming we're just suturing through skin so we're going to lift that up and then we're going to take it and pass you know next to the skin get a good pass there and then we take the other side sometimes I'll actually use the needle itself to kind of lift up the opposite skin edge and kind of roll it up so I'll actually use the needle edge to kind of pick up the skin in the direction that I want so I'll pass it use these uh, pickups to kind of lift and elevate the skin that I want to go through pass it through and typically I'll try to get this all without rearming or anything and then we're going to grab the other end you can kind of lift up with your forceps there to get just the skin edge and it's a little difficult to do on this banana it's probably not the beta greatest uh, greatest example here but then you're just going to pass through uh, the other side and it's kind of ripping the banana so not the best fruit of choice here to do this um, anyways and so once you come out the other side uh, if you can see there but once the needle is actually passed through the incisions come out uh, you can either grab it with your forceps and then reload it or what I like to do is typically kind of hike it up on the skin so that it hasn't completely come out of the skin yet so if it's about like that it's not completely out of the skin and then I like to rearm the needle while it's in the skin that way I am ready to make the next pass without having to to kind of fumble with it uh, so I can go ahead and grab it there on the skin pull it through and then it's ready for the next pass if that makes sense so that's one thing you can do is actually load the needle uh, while it's on the skin so leave it when you pass it through leave it a little bit uh, in the skin so hike it up enough so that you can get a good grab so assuming it's through the skin uh, right here go ahead and just load it for your next pass and again same rules uh, needle drivers are going to be the curve is going to be facing away from the tip so assuming I'm going to do another backhand throw if I've just passed through the through the skin I'm just going to go ahead while it's come through the skin load it there and then I'm ready to go ahead and make my second pass if that makes sense same thing if I were throwing forehand passes so if I loaded for forehand I make my pass in say this direction before I come bring the needle completely out of the skin while it's still uh, in the tissue there and kind of held in place I'll go ahead and rearm it on the tissue because it's faster I think this way and now I'm ready for another forehand pass so that's just a little bit of basic suturing technique uh, so if you're just getting started brand new um, and you're wondering you know how to actually load these things because it can be a little tricky and it can be kind of confusing when you're not really sure which direction you need to have it facing so that you can do a backhand pass or a forehand pass just remember the mnemonic it's as stupid as it is funny ducks by underwear so grab with dominant hand non-dominant hand slide up the suture so that you have control you can spin it between your fingers funny ducks forward down by underwear backhand up so and then needle drivers always facing toward you the curve always facing to you and then you're ready to go ahead and start suturing and to get good at it you're just gonna have to practice you know you're not gonna become uh, really good at it by only doing it in the OR you're gonna become good at it by practicing at home and then 
uh, doing it in the OR. The OR is your game, uh, like a sports game, if you could uh, use that analogy. And your house with your instruments practicing is like your practice. So you wouldn't you wouldn't go play a basketball or baseball game, having not practiced it all. Same thing. You shouldn't go into the OR just hoping to learn the skills in the OR. You should practice these outside the OR. Um, if you're wondering where to get these things, I'll link them down below. Uh, you can get these for you can get three of these for about 20 25 bucks on Amazon. So you know you're looking at eight bucks for some decent uh, Castro Viejo style needle drivers that you can practice with. And then you can get some pickups uh, similar to this for about eight bucks as well um, on Amazon. And then you can get some suture probably wherever, you know, if you're a med student or a resident, wherever you work, you can pick up some extra suture that might be left over from a case or something to practice with uh, or that somebody will give you. Um, so super simple. And go ahead and start practicing. Make sure you're holding the instruments right, uh, feet flat on the floor. Um, elbows slightly more than about 90 degrees so that you're comfortable and not flared out to the sides. So keep them kind of uh, down closer to your sides. You're not flaring them out. And remember, these are uh, these are finger instruments. So you're out, you're doing the movements are with your fingers. It's not always that you want to be moving your entire arm, your entire wrist, uh, you know, at the elbow or at the shoulder joint. These are finger instruments. So use your fingers to move them and maneuver them. Hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that gives you guys some basic kind of intro to suturing, just really basic uh, for micro suturing and suturing on skin for like uh, oculoplastics and that kind of thing. All right, I hope you guys found that somewhat helpful. Just the basics, how to sit, how to hold your arms, how to load the needle and hold the needle drivers and the pickups. Uh, just a silly mnemonic to help you remember how to hold the needle and like what direction to do it so that you can load it correctly for if you're doing a forehand or a backhand pass. Hopefully that's a little bit helpful if you're getting ready to start uh, oculoplastics rotation or a peds rotation or something. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD and I'll see you guys in the next video.